Thank you for your support for this evening and your support for the National Library. Thank you. Thank you all very much. I'm very honored to be here. I need hardly say that uh, remembering Dr. Lisbon King is, is something very important to, to me too. Uh, since I was a very young boy, I had admired him. I heard from my father about him, so I there's a couple of generations uh, who have uh, recognized that uh, his achievements and his contributions, not only to Singapore, but to uh, the world of learning generally, has been important, but sadly, rather neglected for the past few decades. And it is to me uh, an important occasion that we now remember him. Maybe what I can say is to talk about what kind of life Lee Wun King had when Singapore was at the different stages of his life and what it might mean for people today. So I thought just for, as a device, if we looked at his life at roughly, say, 25 year intervals, at roughly age 25, 50 and 75, and, and then give and, and follow with some thoughts about what it might possibly mean for us. He was born in 1869, so the first 25 years would be Roughly when he came back from Edinburgh in 1893, he came back, but 1894-95 would be about the time he came back. By that time, of course, uh, he found, uh, as he, after Edinburgh, Singapore was a very different place. Well, well the Lin Mun Keng represented uh, the leader of that community, very soon he became one anyway, although he was only in his 20s. I'm sure many, many young Singaporeans today thinking ahead from now to 2020, how they would relate to China, what they want to do, how do they want Singapore to connect with China at all levels. But I found that the organizers of this particular gathering and the exhibition and the reprinting of the book has stimulated me to think of so many, many things. And I wanted this, and thank you for this chance to share my thoughts with you.